All right, so testing, testing, one, two, and then say something. Oh. Actual words. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to a different kind of video. I've always wanted to do one of these, and this is a like almost like a top five kind of video. And I got my little brother Raider here with me. I mean, we kind of did that before. We, yeah. I never uploaded it. Okay. No, I didn't. <laughs> I never uploaded it. Um, there was a video we we recorded a while back. We if we want we could try to re-record it because I think I lost it. Um, but because not only that, it was it was when I was still using my phone to edit and record everything. You know, so now, yeah. So now that I have a little bit more of a better setup, we could try to re-record it later. But uh, this, is a, this is technically going to be our first actual recording and editing, and I'm going to try to upload it later. Kind of top five video, and you see, I have a noise from the title. This is Avatar: Last Airbender related. Um, this one is like going to be more of Avatar: Last Airbender, our top five moments that happened throughout the whole series. Not like top five favorite episodes or fights or anything. We can save those later for a different episode. This is just literally our top favorite moment, five favorite moments from the whole series. Like just, or just five favorite moments that like we truly enjoy and like I like in general. Yeah, and I just like watching. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, um, so like we'll start off from five on like say mine and then my little brothers, and then we'll go to top four, and then all the way to our favorite like number one moment throughout the whole like series. Avatar: The Last Airbender came out in 2005 from Nickelodeon and ended their last episode in 2008 we had three awesome se uh, seasons um to do a little quick rundown on avatar last airbender uh for those of you that don't know about it but avatar last airbender even one of the things that i always liked about the concept of it was that yes every show they have seasons but avatar last airbender trademarked it as books you know there's book one yeah. season one book two as season two you know yeah and that's one thing that i always trying to, that was kind of cool and unique about it and then i, I kind of wonder if like to write it out, I wonder how how big one season would be as, a, as an actual book. Yeah, it's it's really crazy. Um, and like the just the show in general, the whole concept, the design that revolved around it was it clearly looked like it was based the anime kind of style. Like you can clearly tell that the, the, the creators of Avatar: The Last Airbender took a lot of depth and brought in like anime kind of genre into it. And for it being a kid show, it is very deep. You know, it mm -hmm. is so good. Definitely one of my favorite shows of all time. Um, I still, even to this day, like to look up clips, just some of my favorite moments and even just episodes in general that I can find online. Uh, well, we're gonna get this underway. And uh, so we're gonna start with my top five favorite moment of the show. The introduction of the oh. Blue Spirit. <laughs> Uh, the first episode with the Blue Spirit, I honestly thought was very good, and just his introduction in general, you know. You had no idea it was Zuko, you yeah. know, and it was just so crazy, and like how stealth he was, and yeah. mysterious he was. I just thought it was so cool. And uh, let me fast forward it to some other parts, like... Funny how, I mean, the Blue Spirit completely slipped my mind. Hmm. Because what, it was only like this episode. Hmm. Uh, and then like right here, when he shows up and Aang sees him for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my literally top favorite moment. I mean, like, I, I, there's more to it for that episode. Like, when Aang finds out that the Blue Spirit is Zuko, and like, this was in season one, you know? And so, just get also getting more depth of Zuko, of what he's capable of, you know, his sword skills and everything, he wasn't relying on his firebending at all, you yeah. know, and I thought that was very cool, we got to see more of a depth into Zuko. That's kind of like, um, later in season two when he, uh, he fights the Jet, mm. he Jet tries to expose him as firebending. Yeah, and he didn't, he, he used his sword skills, he used his fighting skills, he wasn't, he wasn't relying, <laughs> yeah, even Zuko, his sword and fighting skills, like, him showing, uh, going up against Jet was, was a very cool fight, by the way want to point out because you know jet is literally a skilled sword spider as well you know but he's literally a non-bender you know and zuko being a bender but he was also yeah he was relying on his sword fighting skills it was just very cool very cool introduction of zuko showing more of zuko what he's capable of and then like even just as the blue spirit being kind of like i don't know what the word is kind of like a disguise or like kind of like 
another it was like a uh, another side of himself in a way, you know. Yeah, persona. Yeah, you know, which I thought was very cool. So now we're gonna go with part five of my little brother's uh, of what he chose. <laughs> Number five was the prison riot scene <laughs> in book three. We have to start a riot. Okay, but how do we do that? I know how to start one, would you? A prison riot? Please. <laughs> this was definitely one of the comical moments of the whole episode right here. Hey! Riot! <laughs> it was just so ridiculous, like... <laughs> I mean, the whole the whole two episodes on the rock thing is pretty cool. Yeah, it, but it, yeah, the whole episode, the whole two episode parts of the Boiling Rock was a very cool episode, yeah, especially. Uh, well, like Sokka, Sokka's non and then Zuko couldn't show his fireman. Yeah, until eventually he did at the end, and like, yeah. he got captured. And then even for the end of the episode, the whole fight on the uh, gondola. Yeah, on the gondola. Yeah, but like that was definitely had to be one of the comical moments of the whole episode. That's kind of funny that <laughs> one was your number five. And, um, uh, Continuing with the actual right scene, friggin' Zuki friggin' handles. Yeah, Zuki, <laughs> yeah, Zuki had a like, basic. I, th- I feel like it had to be her Probably. moment of the whole s- uh, series, you know? <laughs> was, yeah, yeah, she didn't really do a whole lot. Yeah, she, she didn't do a whole lot throughout the whole series in general. I mean, like, she had her moment in, on, Kyo- on was it, uh, at Kyoshi Island or whatever, and then, uh, like, she had her other moments where, like, you know, she was helping them across Snake Way. And, and uh, the Alpha's Lost Days. Yeah, Alpha's Lost Days where her and the Kyushu Warriors. Yeah, her and the Kyushu uh, uh, Zula. Zula. Yeah. Like, yeah, she, uh, Suki has some some moments, but nothing that really peaked to show what she truly, yeah. really was capable of. <laughs> and that moment really showed because not only because of her time in prison, but like, she was, like, even there was a moment in the, in the show where. She was training in herself. She she was trying to perfect herself. Like she was like the whole hopping off people's heads. Yeah, running off, running that, over. Kind of like the, the walking on water kind of. Thing. Yeah. You gotta like not put all your pressure on your steps. Yeah, like it was it, it was just very interesting. Suki was a definitely very interesting character. I feel like um, after all of that and everything that Suki, her character in general, has been through, I feel like she doesn't get enough credit. You know, and then like that's why a lot of people didn't like for whatever reason some people didn't like the idea of her hooking up with Sokka you kind of hope Sokka would have hooked up with Hop you know there was that whole dynamic but that's a topic for another day but now we're gonna be on to our line number four no! when Avatar Roku came out and took over in the house oh, and the in the in the temple it was just such a badass moment <laughs> when Roku showed up and like they weren't expecting it and Nino took them out. I mean, I'm even getting chills right now, honestly. <laughs> Cause, and they look so upset at the sages. Even Yao's reaction was like... Oh, God! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was just such a good moment in that, in that show, in that episode. Especially, that was in season one. You know, yeah. and like that was. When and then too, you gotta think that freaking no one's seen him in a hundred years. Yeah, you know, no one saw him in a hundred years, and for him to like, like, peer himself for the first time in over a hundred years, but basically in Avatar state form, but overtaking Aang was awesome. Honestly, like it was definitely a, a huge highlight of the whole season one. Just Roku showing off his power, really. Um, it was awesome. That was that, that one number four right there. <laughs> I think just kind of mainly because of that moment, mm. you kind of remember him a lot more than other Avatar. But yeah, so that was my number four moment of was Rogu and the fire temple uh, upset at the sages and everything. But that was very cool. Now we're on to number four uh, moment with my little brother Raiders. Alright. <laughs> got some bad news, Chan. Party's over. <laughs> it was just so funny the episode and like where they just showed up at the end of the party and completely destroyed his house. And then of course <laughs> this iconic shot uh, <laughs> 
it's grinning, and there's fire behind them from the burning down of the house. Right, it's like, one of the top things I, I thought about when you brought up the topic. Yeah. Of, uh, with Charlie. Yeah. It's pretty much, Charlie has a bunch of small things, but they're all pretty big. Yeah. So it's like, you couldn't really pick Charlie mm. for, for anything, because like I said, they're all, they're all small things. Yeah. Really this is really <laughs> yeah, it was truly a, a basically a comical moment at the end of the show where, and it was even such a unique uh, way to end the show too, like showing how much all four of them got along at the end, because um, they have their rough patches, especially Azula, but like showing in a way, even though Zuko was still technically bad right there, <laughs> you know, like showing that how much he still was getting along with everybody. I love how just the dude just standing there, just watching everything. Yeah, she really didn't do anything. It was all it was all Zuko, uh, May, and Ty Lee. I thought that was funny. I don't think uh, May got a whole lot of action outside of this episode either. Yeah, uh, I, I definitely think so too. Um, it's really hard to say. I feel like May at times as well was kind of was kind of overlooked by Ty Lee a little bit every so often. Yeah, um, yeah, a lot of her fights are. I think one of the reasons why is because of her style. It involves di daggers and everything. Yeah. And it's because being a kid's show, kind of have, they kind of have to be careful not to, like, show her killing people. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, clearly, she is a, a deadly, like, assassin kind of woman. And, like, they had to be careful playing with that, you know? But Ty Lee was all about chi blocking and fighting hand-to-hand, -hand, you know, so that was a more easier to show. All right, so now... We're going to be on my, my cheese. So now, uh, we'll be on number three of my top favorite moment of the series. I wish I found a better clip of the moment. So for us, it's going to look kind of small. But I'll see what I can do, what I can for editing. See if I can zoom in on it or something. But yeah, this is the best I, could, I was able to do. When Zuko, uh, and when Ira hugs Zuko and forgives him. I feel like it was a, like a, such a strong emotional moment. Like, and then when he tells him that, like, I was never angry with you. I was sad because I, I was, I was afraid you lost your way. You know, like, and both of them were crying. You know, and like, Ira was literally the father. His father figure. You know. And Arrow was even pointing out on how, like, he was so proud of Zuko, especially he did it by himself, that he, like, went on the right path instead of going the wrong path, you know? And I just, I honestly think that is definitely one of the, one of the, one of the few powerful moments of the whole show of, like, just because throughout the whole series, the series, you see the connection of Zuko and Arrow, you know? And, like, it was a tearful, drifting moment and also, like, just an emotion. Yeah, it was just, it was a powerful moment. But that was my number three. That was my number three. Uh, I don't know what you think. Yes, yeah, it's kind of crazy because um, I feel like even Iro kind of understood that. You know, how he mentioned before how good and you know, evil are kind of always that complex within Zuko. Yeah. So he kind of knows that that struggle was there. Yeah. Even even when after he was pretty much put in jail. So you know saying. That pretty much got good inside Zuko. Pretty much overcame yeah. the darkness. Yeah, like, he's, he's, you know, he's proud of that. Yeah, Iroh, Iroh, as very not knowledgeable and wise as he is, he's telling Zuko that, like, good and evil always battles within him, and then finally, good really over, overcame that that was within him. And it was, yeah, that moment was definitely my, one of my uh, favorite moments. And I would choose that out of my top five. I was like, I placed that at my number three. So now we're going to go to your number three. All right, this one, was Hello Brothers, number top three, the like Team Avatar fighting against the Swamp Betty. This is yeah, this was definitely a crazy episode, <laughs> fighting against that vine, like basically the Swamp Bender, like this Master Swamp Bender, where he's water bending through the vines, so he's controlling the plants like that. Yeah. One of the about it. 
in a way, yes. Basically, it is really if you think about it, because in, later on, at, or around book three, they point out that like Tara finds an old lady, like the what was the episode the Puppet Master. That was not what it was called. I, I think so. Yeah, and uh, it was based, she was basically the last waterbender from the Southern Tribe that was captured by the Fire Nation, and uh, she was teaching Katara and showing signs that like there's water even in plants. Clearly, I feel like that's kind of the thing everyone knows about. Yeah. Um, that's how- one of, the, one of the movies she does when she explains this is that she spins in like a circle and mm-hmm. she takes all the water out of the these flowers. Yeah. And uh, like, even for the swamp bender, for him to for him to learn this on his own, living in the swamp, that he's water, he's controlling the water with the vines. And that's why he's able to create this image of like a, a vine monster in the swamp. You know, and scare away basically poachers, I guess you could say. And... It, the, the, if, if you really do think about it, this is a hint towards Blended. Because, yeah, but, but yeah. just the design of the spine monster thing itself is pretty crazy. Yeah, and it's just crazy too because how depth Avatar Last Ever underwent, where they actually introduced and called it blood bending. You know, like it's a kid's show, you know? There's, <laughs> there's, um, uh, there's a DS3DS game of Avatar Last Ever, and they, they kind of look more like little people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, big heads. Yeah. And they call it body bending. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of like, my, you know, monetization. Yeah, because I think, because I think uh, there was controversy around, I remember hearing about it, that there was controversy around that, that episode because, you know, for, like I said, for it being a kid's show, and clearly the design concept of it all is, looks more based as anime. Like, that's where they get their their idea of the design for it, that for it to, for them to even try to call it bloodbending was risky, yeah. you know? Uh, they described uh, the swamp like a live fight, live itself. Yeah, it, that, that whole episode is a crazy episode because like everyone, every uh, member of the team Avatar right there, all three of them, they have their own visions or something of the swamp, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. And then like, uh, even at the end of the episode, there's that little, I guess you say jump scare, which like, I prevent, Act Swap the bird, the bird yeah, <laughs> showing that like the swamp is alive, and something powerful is there that's living yeah. there, or maybe it might be like a spirit, like a ghost. Not a ghost. I wasn't gonna say ghost yeah, then from spirit realm. <laughs> then that could be explained that tornado that first sucked them down in the beginning. Yeah, of the episode, they they didn't do that. Yeah, they didn't do that. They can't do that because they're not like airbenders or anything like yeah. that. So they're saying that's literally something powerful within the swamp drew them in. That way, Aang could have this vision. So now we'll go to my number two on my list. When Appa reunites with the gang. <laughs> We're coming in to save the day. Yeah, it came in to save the day against them. Because like Appa was gone for I don't remember how many episodes, but like for the in the time span in the show, he was gone for what, a couple months maybe? Yeah. Or something? Even right here, I like this moment right here. Um, and then, like, he gets down, they yeah. Hug him. And then, and then, like, Aang right there, he was he was crying, like you know, telling him, you know, that he missed him, you know. And then, like, Opera right there, like, closing his eyes, he, he, him being not only like I guess Aang's pet, but like his best friend in a way, that he felt that feeling from Aang, and like, like he felt that connection again. I remember in what was Opera's last days that like, what was it, the Guru? Um, um, he pointed out that he felt. Oppo was losing his connection with Aang because he felt like fear and abandonment and everything. So I really feel like after watching that and feeling that connection right there in that moment where Aang was crying and hugging Appa and telling him that he missed him and Appa closed his eyes, like Appa, I think, I feel like Appa felt that reconnection and that fear was gone and yeah. felt that love again, you know? So I thought that was a really cool moment and that's why that moment was my number two spot because I love Appa. Who doesn't love Appa? You know, what's wrong with you? <laughs> trip out on how pretty much a lot of freaking during the whole boss boss of the day uh, they, they kind of made the dally look like right now. yeah they kind of did <laughs> <laughs> yeah they definitely kind of did <laughs> alright so now so we'll are... get to that later right yeah <laughs> <laughs> so now we are on to number two of my little brother's list Aang versus Boomy, season one. Choose your opponent. 
and Boomy had so many like trials for Aang in this episode because you know Boomy was clearly Aang's old friend that he mentioned at the beginning of the episode. Oh, fast forward when Boomy reveals himself or reveals his masculine self. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then especially especially for him to be an earthbender. <laughs> like that was unexpected. I remember this episode so good. But like like I'll show more of it because I really like that episode. Um but no, it's funny too, I wanna to point this out. This one this moment was gonna be in my top five, but I couldn't find a good clip. And then he found a good clip and I was like and I had already had my top five. I was like, alright, fine. Yeah. <laughs> Because I was curious if by chance we were if we were gonna pick any yeah, similar the, moments. The first clip I found of this was when we first uh, uh, captured. Okay, yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, um, but it was such a good it was such a good um, episode, especially yeah, the Cabbage Man. Says you know off of the head. Yeah, one for, for the cabbage. Ca one for every cabbage. It's like there's only three of them. You know, <laughs> how many heads do they have? All right. Um. <laughs> you thought I was a frail old man. I'm the most powerful Earthbender you'll ever see. One thing I want to point out about this episode is that I feel like the, the art design was slightly different compared to the rest of the series. And, and I think the only reason why was because of the art design for Boomy. There was so much detail in for Boomy. Yeah. You know, uh, for him to reveal how strong he was and everything. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I truly believe Boomy has to be one of the most powerful Earthbenders other than Toph. <laughs> you know, like. So I'm not sure if it's. Um... An official little comic script, or if it's fan-made, but it was a Thousand movie. Mm. Oh, you no, know, it was Avatar comic, I believe. Um, but here, watch it. And that, I love this moment. Hmm. Like they both had each other at the impasse. <laughs> well done, Avatar. You fight with much fire in your heart. I love Ang's reaction right here. <laughs> it was just so good. It was like such a reaction that I feel like even we had at home. Like what? Like you could do that? Like <laughs> it falls to the ground like it's dope. Yeah, or something. It was just so funny and like literally caught Ang off guard. <laughs> Pretty great about that episode. For one, it's part of season one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But only did chomp dang for like things differently. Yeah, yeah. And like, then um, and then it really displayed freaking uh, how how powerful Aang could be. Yeah, he really displayed Aang really displayed how powerful his like, earth or his airbending is, you know, in that episode against yeah, like, uh, you, you didn't show it in the clip, but uh, I remember uh Bowman pretty much threw like a gigantic boulder, boulder yeah. at Aang and yeah. Aang made like a tornado to throw back at him. I'm gonna see if I can find it real quick. About right here. Aang's creating yeah, this powerful is. tornado, and Boomy throws this big old boulder at him, and he redirected it at him. <laughs> yeah, like, Boomy was not expecting that. And that's when, that's where the part I came, yeah. you know. But yeah, like, I, I, I definitely do feel like shortly after season one, they stopped really showing Aang airbending. You know, he was, they were really focused more showing on Aang's uh, water bending. Yeah, you know, it was bending. kind of like, okay, we get it, he's a good airbender. Yeah, <laughs> but honestly, after seeing, I was like, this episode, and I think there was a couple other episodes showing his airbending skills, especially how powerful air can be, like, I really do wish. Yeah, he, like, uh, the Aang started that tornado, it even showed, like, the glass pulling mm -hmm. pull in. Yeah. And it proved that he's basic. Yeah. To hold himself down. Yeah, definitely. Like, I, I definitely do feel like, you know, after season one, I, they stopped revealing Aang's airbending capabilities little by little. Where he hardly even done did airbending the rest of the show. Yeah. You know, he hardly ever did it because they wanted to show that Aang can now do these other things. So let's show more of that. You know, you already know he can do airbending. But for me, I'm like, I want to see him do more airbending, honestly. I, I want to see him yeah. have a good balance of both. You know, because yeah. airbending is powerful. Yeah, like back with the the, the light in the swamp, mm -hmm. how one thing you normally don't see Aang do that he kind of did in that fight is that he shot like an air blade and he cut off the the, the one of the arms 
Okay. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right, so now our top number ones. Do you want to do yours first or do you want to do mine? Okay, all right, we're going to do mine. So we'll do my favorite, my, my number one moment, like throughout the whole series that I feel like I just, I, I truly enjoy and I always check it out every so often. <laughs> honestly, I can't help but think this one is my favorite moment, honestly. For those of you that don't know this moment, it's from season two or book two, Tales of Bossing Say episode, and it, this is the Iro part of the episode. Happy birthday, my son. If only I could have helped you. Leaves from the vine falling so slow like fragile tiny shells drifting in the foam. Pickles so simple come marching home. Brave soldier boy comes marching home. I, I'm okay. <laughs> Honestly, every time I see that whole... I got so much chills. Yeah, that whole part. I even got... My eyes got a little watery. Um, it's just such a powerful episode. Um, yeah. Oh, not really episode. More of a moment. More of a moment for Iroh because... The, the, that episode was strong with everyone's gay. Yeah, everyone's gay, but I feel like Iroh is definitely over to everyone. Else's life. The, his part of the episode, he was literally helping everybody. He was helping so many people. And then he sang that song again, and it was such an emotional moment because not only did the, fan, like, the fans know it was his son's birthday, but like, if you really think about it, last time, Iroh mentioned a couple times before, last time he ever was near Boston State, he was trying to invade it. You know, and I think his son was part of the war with him there. But unfortunately, his son died, and in the war. So thinking about it, his son died within Bossing Say, or you know, outside, or just within the area of Bossing Say. That was, that was also the last time he saw his son was when they were at war. You know, and yeah. So this is probably like his first time doing that. The whole thing got him free and stuff because he had to get back. Yeah, and then only that he he broke. I think they said that he broke through the wall, but like he never really approached. That, I think that far is you know I don't think he got anywhere that far and, you know, but like just it's still such a powerful moment for Iroh like you know just thinking about his whole character that like he lost his son in the war that changed everything you know when his son died and it's kind of crazy but think about it like were they aware that his son was buried there because it's uh, fire nature soldier. Well, I mean, yeah, we never know if he actually got buried there, or we never know if, like, they recovered his son's body, or if there's any witnesses. Like, they never explained how he died, they didn't know his son died in the war. You know, um, they never explained if they recovered his body and they buried it back in their fire nature or what. You know, but, like, they just know that his son died in the war. And Iroh was leading this invasion on Boston Se, and he, and the reason why they, I remember they explained it, the reason why Iroh left and retreated was because of the loss of his son. Yeah, you know? it said like he lost the will to fight or Yeah, something. he lost the will and everything. And seeing his character seeing his character grow throughout the whole series and then especially in this moment, it literally more understandable seeing that that you get the feeling of Pyro of like the reason why he lost the will to fight, you know, because he lost his son. Yeah. And part of the when you with black hair. Yeah, like, oh, alright. <laughs> But it's funny too, and I don't know that I didn't realize it, we were both very quiet during that clip. <laughs> just because it was such an emotional moment, and it was like... I feel like it'd be wrong for us to do anything during it. Yeah, episode. honestly, that's just like, yeah. Now, number one, my little brother's number one. Number one! Hey. Why would you assume that? If you ask me, I think we're just going to sail right in and <laughs> Team Avatar invade Earth Kingdom. This is like this is literally right after when they got Appa back, and they don't have the saddle, so they're holding on for dear life on Appa. And honestly, I want to point out, 
I love that moment of how intense Aang was. Like, yeah. he didn't even like, flinch. He was probably just focused. Yeah, and I, I feel like he was also just even upset just thinking about how the Earth Kingdom had Alpha captured. Yeah. You know? And that, like, you know, they're throwing a boulder at him while they're, he's flying on Alpha. They just got back, and he's like, hell no! And he <laughs> just blocks it, like, no problem. Like, oh! Like, that was such a good shot right there. And even these shots right here, seeing them coming at them, this whole scene is such a powerful freaking episode, like, part of the episode. And that. Oh! Oh, like, getting wrecked? Uh, yeah, just thinking about how they're taking on all these Earth Bender defending yeah. soldiers, but, like, for how powerful Toph and Aang are, yeah. and that, like, they're outclassed by them, you know? Yeah, I don't know, like, Yeah. I know he's really great. Yeah. Like, right here, uh, uh, right here. I mean, uh, Katara runs out. Yeah. And she uses her waterbending. And then she grabs the water from below, and then, bam, whoops him in. <laughs> and then Aang comes in and freezes it. <laughs> You know, and I can't help but wonder, I was like, was any of them still underwater when you froze it? That's <laughs> why they actually, they actually kind of started to feel bad for them, because, like, you know, they're kind of handling them. <laughs> and this shot right here is just funny. Saga's opening doors, and you see people flying in the background. <laughs> Sorry, wrong door. Yeah, so that was Other Brother Raiders' number one moment of them invading the, the Earth Kingdom Temple, or just the palace. Um, and things... Or King's Palace. Or yeah, King's Palace. Palace. Yeah. When they're invading... Palace completely slipped away. Yeah, when they're invading his palace. Um, so, like, that was definitely a good moment. I honestly, I, I'm surprised that moment slipped my mind. You know, I, I think the only reason why is because I saw that as more of a fight yeah. scene, scenario. But. Yeah. I love it. I love that the scene. Just because the animation of it flows so good. Yeah, definitely. It, it just nonstop. You know, they just keep going. Yeah, I feel I do feel like definitely the the art design and everything and the animation of that episode was really good. I feel like they clearly put a lot of work on that episode. That like, it was a lot more detailed. Um, and as, like you said, the choreography was really good. Um, yeah, you, you know, they gotta do all their actual movements, endings, and special smoke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the smoke was like, like the dirt. Du thing. Yeah, the dust from the dirt from the earth breaking. You know, it was yeah. That that was definitely a good episode. You know, like, uh, when I landed and you see all these, like, square pillars kind of like, you know, mm -hmm. it was individually with other, with other things, like, the top was pointing that block back and forth. Yeah. Stuff like that. You know, like, you think what happened to Rip R2, like, the, the, the handling. Yeah. Alright, so, my number five was Blue Spirit. Yours, number five, was, uh, Prison Riot, wasn't it? <laughs> Who, who do you think, uh, between me and you, who do you think got a better number five? The Blue Spirit one or the Prison Riot? Uh, I would have to lean a little bit more towards my Blue Spirit one, honestly. The I Prison mean, Riot is just... The, the, the Prison Riot was, like, comedy. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, not a whole lot else yeah. was going on. But uh, the Blue Spirit was a, a very interesting concept and, like, very important part of the story, that later on when they go and you can see his brain when they go to found him out of one yeah and then you know he out to Aang he's like what about you he wants to be a set or thought about we could be friends you know so it's like not that episode that line would have been there yeah and then our number four was uh Avatar Roku you know uh when he took over Aang to help fight against them uh, um, Zhao and, the, and, his, and his men. And then your number four was the party's over. Yeah. <laughs> Who do you think got a better one on that? I mean, I would definitely go with Roku. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, come on, it's Roku. <laughs> you said that just like such a badass moment. Yeah, it was such a powerful moment. Oh my gosh. My number three was. Oh, my number three was um, Zuko apologizing to Iroh. You know, and they hugged. From book three. Both of them crying. And then your number four was the, uh, the vine one. I, I would have to go oh, yeah, the swamp one, yeah. The swamp monster, the team I have swamp monster. I would have to go with your swamp monster one. Yeah. On that one, honestly, as numbers as a top three, I think that one overtakes mine. I, yeah, I think just overall the episode 
pretty crazy. Yeah, it was a pretty crazy episode in general. Yeah. yeah. I definitely have to agree with you on that. Yeah, because that one was a very uh, crazy, unique episode. All right, and then my number two was... Oh, my number two was Appa being reunited with the with Team Avatar. Your number two was... Boomy. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, Aang vs. Boomy. Now, that's a tough one for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm kind of leaning more towards Boomy. And it's funny, too, that I, it's funny, too, that I say that only because... I wanted that one in my top five. Yeah, I, was <laughs> I, I originally wanted that one in my top five, and I couldn't find a good clip, and then you found a good clip. And so that's the only reason why I didn't have it in my top five. But, like, I'm definitely more towards the movie over Appa, and like, like our top two. You know, that's that. That's what I'm thinking. The one that Zuko reuniting with Iroh part, yeah. kind of. Appa reuniting with Aang, yeah. I would say. Appa's and Aang's more emotional. Yeah, I can see that a little bit. Um, you still have Alan's brother. Yeah. Alright, so our number ones, mine was uh, Iroh, you know, um, Tales of Iroh moment, the ending of that, and then yours was the invasion of the Earth Kingdom Palace. Uh, damn, they're both so good. I don't <laughs> know. Because it's like, one's a badass moment, <laughs> the other one's a, an emotional moment. It is a very emotionally charged. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, it, that's that uh, episode scene. That, that was actually dedicated to voice the, actor. Yeah, the original voice actor of Pyro. Um, and then his brother took over the, um, what was the Mako? Uh, his Mako's brother took over the voice of Pyro uh, after him. But, and yeah, it's just funny because I feel like out of our, both of our choices, mine is definitely the most emotional, and then yours is more badass <laughs> like, <laughs> one because it's an invasion at fighting scene, you know? So it's just, it's really hard to pick. Um, I'm kind of leaning a little more towards yours. Just a little bit. <laughs> but, they were both good, though, definitely. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that I was kind of a bit stuck. And I think if it was maybe long, a bit longer, it would help. A little bit. I feel like if they would have showed, if they would have showed his son, like, almost like a memory. Yeah. You know, a memory sequence. I mean, um, they showed, like, him, but that was like a, it was supposed to be like a portrait. Yeah, because, yeah. Like an actual... Yeah, because they, 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 they didn't have the photography back then. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know, for me, even to this day, like, alright, so basically, our number one, I'm leaning more towards my little brother's choice. So, yeah, three out of two for me. But, um, anyway. <laughs> you think that it was even more emotional with that? Because I think he carries that around with him. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, I wrote, carries that photo around with him, that, that portrait of the sun. Um, and if you think about it, it's like, that's the only thing he has left to remember is his face. Yeah, and not just that, he brought it with him into Boston Bay. Yeah. They almost had nothing going into Boston Bay. Like, it honestly makes me wonder and question that, like, did he ever, did he ever lose that picture? You know, yeah. because in season two, Iroh got captured, sacrificed himself for, yeah. you know, for his amount of to get away. And he got, and he got mean, captured as Lula. If I really had a guess, I would think Azula found it and burned it. If, That's if, just something she would do. I feel like if not, Zuko probably found it and saved it. Yeah. Because <laughs> even though, yes, and that, 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 and like, and all that, but like, I feel like Zuko wouldn't be that, that down that dark path enough mm -hmm. to burn the portrait of his cousin. Yeah, you know? yeah like, either Zuko found it and saved it, or Zuko found it and burned it. Yeah, yeah, it's really hard to say. Um, but that was our top five. That was our top five, and uh, let me know what you all thought in the <laughs> comments down below. I'll try to add links if I can, possible. I'll try to add links in the description down below for the our clips that we found of our top fives. And yeah, uh, until the next time, everybody.